I was really looking forward to being with you to kind of uh, share the celebration of the research on Cedric and uh, Samantha's book and the exhibition and everything, and especially tomorrow to be with uh, uh, with the gang working back in the archives on Matter Clark. So I, I'm I'm super sorry, but it was really a pleasure listening to uh, to Samantha and uh, Whitney and Kathy and their their thoughts. And I just will just add a few more thoughts um, because uh, I suppose what what can be very um, uh, irritating about events about Cedric Price is that is that uh, he he can do no wrong, right? So he he, he comes across uh, like unbelievably brilliant, which he was, uh, unbelievably funny he was, unbelievably intelligent he was, unbelievably uh, inventive all these things. So then then conferences about Cedric become super annoying because it's come, some kind of mythology of Cedric is uh, in the air. And I think he would not like that at all. Um, but I don't have the courage to really attack him in the way that I think would be truly respectful. So I'm afraid I will not respect him so much by saying uh, why I think he's really still very, very interesting. And, and it could be that the reason that we still celebrate uh, Cedric so much is that we are very annoyed with what we are normally hearing in architecture, that we have a kind of uh, intelligence deficit. Um, and and we cannot afford to kind of uh, criticize Cedric because we have so little else to to uh, 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 to, to celebrate. But I, I will talk a little bit about. Let me try to put on the um, share the screen with you and and go to the PowerPoint. So do you see? Do you see Cedric? Okay, so it's, it's uh, of course, very, uh, for anybody who, who knew Cedric, you know perfectly, immediately this photograph uh, constructs Cedric uh, in, in all senses. I think it might be the first time he was uh, published in a newspaper, I'm not sure, in relationship to Fun, Fun Palace. So it is, a, of course, a face with this uh, strange, look at the eyes are very uh, disconnected. Um, you can see that he would like to talk, but there is a cigar there. The cigar is kind of casually in the mouth, uh, and, and he's just somehow floating there. Uh, and I think it was always the case that he was somehow uh, float, floating, um, not, not quite uh, with us. Um, for me, it was a great honor to work, uh, to, work to make the exhibition with the CCA about, about uh, Fun Palace, and an incredible honor to spend time with him, harassing him, um, uh, mainly about Fun Palace, like a kind of a police in, in interrogator, uh, while drinking a lot, as you can imagine. Um, and and uh, why? What is it that I value so much about Cedric? I think he's basically a stupidity reduction machine, and I think this uh, mechanism uh, is still working. And that's what you can hear in the presentations so far. He he still has a capacity. To, to make most things said in, in architectural discourse uh, stupid. I was very, very affected by, I was asking him why he was doing a certain kind of research for, for the Fun Palace, which was a kind of obsessive. He was trying to understand if somebody that would like chocolate would also like movies, for example. And therefore, in Fun Palace, the chocolate should be near the movie theater. How, how do you make a kind of people who like chocolate would also like theater? So he, he makes an incredible research into this. And I asked him, why did he do that? Because it was an enormous effort. And he said to reduce the level of my ignorance. And I've always thought this is the most uh, magnificent uh, kind of approach. I, ever since then, I've thought that stupidity reduction is really the main uh, uh, project. Fun Palace, in that sense, is part of, of a kind of effort to reduce stupidity, not just in the sense of, OK, it's a university of the people, a place where, where, where people can educate themselves. But also, of course, was a project that was designed to, to as a kind of critique of normal architectural uh, practice. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you know the project, but it's a kind of intersection, uh, almost a kind of uh, promiscuous and complete intersection between a theater, a, a factory, and a laboratory. Uh, and I think what's so important about it is that this is a structure that is defined uh, not so much by, by, by what it is, but by what it is not. In other words, the, 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 the mission of, of Price in, in, in Fun Palace is uh, what, what, of, of what is not there, what should be removed. Uh, in that sense, 
thinking about fun palaces is a, is a is a is a complex thing because it's not about you cannot analyze fun palace in my opinion as a kind of addition to architectural history you know that architecture is moving along and then there is this new addition because precisely what fun palace is is a kind of reduction a kind of editing editing of 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 architecture and it's precisely in this sense that that price is trying to take away what is normally there that he is thoroughly modern that is to say he's a modern architect uh, 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 very much following the kind of um, uh, mandate uh, of 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 as Bucky Fuller would say to do uh, the most you can with the, with the with the least to to be as streamlined and e economical and as efficient and therefore ultimately as generous as possible how how, how architecture could be more generous by uh, more efficiently uh, carrying out all of its tasks in order to liberate the people that encounter it. And, and this kind of uh, 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 figure of prize as just trying to be a modern architect, which is to say to reduce architecture to as little as possible, means, of course, that to exhibit him or to discuss him, again, is very very complicated. And I think that's in general true of Cedric Price. I think, as as uh, Mirko was saying, that there may be like 30,000 objects of Cedric Price in the archive, so a kind of a, a huge quantity of material. But all this material, all this enormous research and all these different documents are all contributing to a project that's all about re reduction, uh, simplification and, and, and disappearance. So uh, to say it another way around and to use his own words, uh, uh, Fun Palace is an anti-building and he is an anti-architect. He described himself as anti-architect uh, number one. So what would it mean an anti-architect and what would it mean an, an, an anti-building? And as you, know, as you know, there are a number of images of the Fun Palace like these ones, uh, which give it a sense of substance, or let's say of a half substance. There you see there are people occupying uh, the space. Um, these are images produced uh, for magazines. So this is these are not images coming from the let's say, thinking process of Fun Palace, but from the publicity uh, of Fun Palace. And, and you can, in a way, feel the physical reality of the structure, and you have a kind of a vague sense uh, of occupation. Uh, in fact, Cedric hated these images. Um, and these images, by the way, whenever anybody talks about Fun Palace, these are the images they tend to show. Uh, uh, because there is a sort of a density to lit even, for example, in this image, a kind of uh, uh, literal density of the of the side into which the drawing has been collaged. And in fact, when I was talking with Cedric, this is the image he hated the most of the whole project. And I asked him uh, why, but I knew perfectly the answer because it looks like a building. And and an, whatever anti an anti building would be, it, it would not be uh, like this. Of course, you might look at it and say, well, it's uh, less of a building than a building would normally be. But for him, it was uh, uh, too much, too much. His preference would be for this one, for example, uh, I think the very first drawing uh, published when Joan Littlewood made her article about the project in, in May of 64 in The New Scientist. And you see he, he does a kind of diagrammatic uh, axonometric of the project, which has many features that are very polemical. Of course, uh, the, you know, there are no people, that it's a, it is an exonometric, that it's only a section of the building, a kind of a slice of the building, but also that the uh, temporary, equip temporary equipment that has been placed in there for activities is drawn with more substance than the structure that supports it. In other words, whatever the, the, the real architecture of this building is not the, architect not the architecture provided at the beginning, but the architecture that will be developed uh, by the people that uh, use it. And this, of course, is the is the kind of uh, uh, thinking of Price, and this is coming out of a whole series of drawings. And of course, it's it's uh, uh, job number 51, uh, Fun Palace project. So here is drawing number 18. And again, it's a more diagrammatic uh, uh, image of the project and its connectivity and uh, connections and so on. Uh, and these drawings, and now we are at number 65, become increasingly uh, precise and increasingly. Uh, detailed, as you can imagine, there's no line in this drawing that has not been subjected to a lot of calculation, a lot of testing and, and, and retesting. Um, this is not so much a, a, a structure that has been kind of, as it were, built up on the page of this drawing, but it is a kind of um, 
result of a whole series of uh, tests. And, and what are we looking at? We're looking at, uh, uh, there is in fact not only a clarity of structure, there's only structure. Um, of course, this in a certain way follows from the modern project of trying to remove everything uh, that's not necessary. But it's even, let's say, less than structure. It's more like a kind of a scaffolding. Um, and, and, they, and you can see what he has done, of course, is in, in trying to uh, undermine the pretensions and the patronizations of architecture. He's taken away the walls uh, and the roof. And, and, you know, not many architects do very well without the walls and the roof. Um, even the pneumatic mafia uh, produce a kind of uh, quasi roof with the plastic uh, bubble. This, this does not even have, the, have that uh, 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 logic. Almost any simple sense of physical shelter has given way to this uh, uh, kind of um, um, uh, mechanism. Uh, what is the project? Uh, the, the one thing he has not, uh, he has not given away and, and in, in a research like this, what's very important is what, what of traditional architecture is not abandoned, is not edited out, is, 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 require, is required, and even supercharged. In this case, it's the floor. There's a single horizontal that never changes, never moves, uh, um, and you see it in the drawing. It is packed with infrastructure. Uh, the, the project is simply a floor with infrastructure inside it and a scaffolding uh, uh, above. Of course, this floor, this horizontal, which is huge, and the project in theory could expand its way uh, uh, through the neighborhood, uh, it's a stage. Uh, it is exactly like uh, uh, the stage of a theater, uh, but this is a kind of a theater in which the visitors are the, o the audience become the performers. You, there is no kind of grand entry from the street. You bleed onto the stage from all sides and the big scaffolding above you is exactly like the mechanical apparatus in a theater that enables, enables any kind of scenery to be placed on the stage and removed so that any, anything could happen. So basically, it's an enormous theater which has had the roof and the walls taken away and the seating of the audience. And the audience are, as it were, thrown into the middle of the stage uh, as the performers, but not just as the performers, also as the directors, the thinkers, the writers, and so on. Uh, and, and, and in this space, this stage, up to 55,000 people will be playing a kind of a chicken and egg with their desires. Uh, uh, you know, a, a, a space that is half what you want and then you react to it, and, and then how you react to what you have wanted produces a new kind of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, behavior. So again, going back just a little bit to uh, uh, 1949, and I, I could get obsessive, by the way, about the difference between if you look at the gantry crane, which is on the top, there's very small changes in the design of that. So the shape of this particular version in 49 means something significant. But you have this sort of series of abstract uh, scaffolding. And notice that the only thing that's really uh, uh, a very secure and solid line in his work is actually the uh, frame of the drawing itself. That all of all of Price's drawings will fit into into this very same frame. This has the number 51. This is drawing 52 of number 51. There will be Project 52 afterwards, and there was Project 50 before. So for all of C Cedric Price's kind of removal of everything except for a floor, you could say that as an architect, he removes everything except for this frame, this uh, this kind of uh, uh, space in which he does his work. And then you will notice also that the that this particular project is a kind of echo of the frame because he has a frame in which there is a space in which in theory he could produce any project in the same way that the fun palace is a, is a, is a floor in which in theory the visitors could develop any activity in any space. In other words, they are architects. So in other words, the architect here, an anti-architect would be somebody who creates the apparatus that enables the so-called client, the so-called human being to be the architect. So an anti-building is a building, as it were, given to uh, those who will occupy it to uh, uh, design. So, of course, in a certain way, there's a resonance between the way in which he's designing this and, and the way in which he imagines the people who will occupy it, will, he will design it. And you see, he even does, sorry for the slightly out of focus, he repeats the same pattern uh, of this basic sort of system inside his frame, turning the frame into a grid, and then uses that very same frame to elaborate. In this case, he's working out the script for the movie, 
that will be made to advertise the project. So in this moment, Cedric Price with his little drawings is occupying the scaffolding of his project in exactly the way that he imagines it will be occupied by those that will use it. Of course, he has this difficulty, which is how to draw on the scaffolding to show how this could be used without using the full force of the architect, without, as it were, usurping the very rights of the citizens of London to use the space in the way that he wants. How, how does an architect, as it were, abdicate the architectural responsibility or hand it over? How does one use the skills of an architect, which are precisely designed to control and hold the line, to, as it were, give the power to draw the line uh, uh, to other people? And this, of course, is a movie which is attempt to, uh, attempting to, as it were, uh, glamorize this. The reason I insist on this is that if, if Price is, is uh, undermining the figure of the architect and undermining the idea of a building, he must be therefore undermining the status of lines because architects are, of course, those who draw lines and not just draw lines, those who hold the line and not just those who hold the line but represent the holding of the line, even that we might suggest that architecture is a discipline is exactly that, the discipline of drawing, holding, and, and representing uh, 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 the line. Uh, architecture always sees itself as, as kind of a set of fixed lines against which movement, instability, uncertainty, the future, the past can be registered. That is to say, in a, in a sort of very, very strange way, architect invents itself as something without a history, uh, as something that allows history to, as it were, uh, 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 take place. And this, this, uh, uh, this pretension, this kind of astonishing claim is built into even the most uh, work of the most radical and apparently destabilizing uh, architect. And if you think about it, the basic kind of uh, drama of the architect, the idea of, of making a seemingly solid object that doesn't change, the stillness of architecture, or architecture is the very uh, agent of stillness, this is the most bizarre and uncanny effect. After all, we live in a universe in which everything is movement, spinning, vibrating, chemical reactions. There is nothing that's not moving. Uh, we are uh, mo spinning around at, at 30,000 miles an hour, uh, and we are all vibration, all, all radio mag radiomagnetic waves. So, to, so to, to, for the architect to construct the image of something that doesn't move uh, is, to, is to construct something precisely uh, unna unnatural, un 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 something that cannot be found, something that can only be invented, which then claims for itself the status of the kind of reference point against which nature, humanity, orgasm, uh, organism, you name it, any kind of fun, will be uh, 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 exposed. So, of course, it's not by chance, I would suggest to you, that, that Cedric Price is kind of the determined enemy of the solid line, if the solid line, as it were, holds all of the kind of uh, patronizing authority uh, of the architect. Perhaps only Bucky Fuller is equally dedicated to undoing the status of the solid line, uh, uh, insisting that everything, including architecture and especially architecture, is porous and vibrating and breathing. By the way, if a building doesn't breathe, we die, right? Um, but to represent the breathing of the building is considered a somewhat scandalous uh, uh, activity. So again, Price is doing this enormous amount of research, trying to find the minimum system with the maximum flexibility, but mainly looking for a system that will render every line uh, fragile, not, not simply in the sense that uh, um, the, those that occupy this space will, in a, in a, in a kind of collective way, continually redraw uh, the lines and re-establish uh, the space. Uh, precisely, he's looking for a mechanism that, it, let's say, very precise, uh, very calculated, but precisely the purpose of this machine is to be uncertain, unpredictable, uh, 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 and so on. So you have a, a really brilliant kind of a tension in, in the Fun Palace between a kind of a technical uh, precision and minimalism uh, even a kind of calculation or mathematics or statistics of the project, all in the name of, of that which is uh, uh, uncertain. And again, if you look at this uh, uh, image produced for a kind of um, publicity event in the, in the, in the um, mistaken hope that money could be raised with such a drawing, if you look into this uh, uh, project, you will see that almost every line uh, is a dotted line. 
So uh, the, the sort of basic hypothesis here, and was the hypothesis in a way of the research behind the uh, Fun Palace exhibition that we did in, in Montreal and, and, and then in New York, is to try to imagine what would an architecture of the dotted line be. You see here that the ground is the only really solid line, and the one drawn with, with kind of a thickness and uh, uh, immutability is again the line of the floor. Uh, described as ground level. Everything else, the more you look, you will see this drawing is entirely composed uh, uh, of, of dotted lines. Everything here is uncertain. Maybe only this uh, theater box is hanging there like some kind of appliance, but almost everything else is kind of a shimmery. And then as you look at drawing after drawing after drawing, you realize it's a kind of a three-dimensional dotted line. Um, and so, again here, you, you're looking at the effect of a dotted line. When you when you look at the drawings for the brochures, they're dominated by this. Uh, when he publishes the uh, uh, kind of a theory of the project, endless dotted line. Remember, Fun Palace is something like a stage, a platform, a horizontal surface with a scaffolding above it, completely suspended in networks of physical and electronic communication. So it's, it's uh, floating there, just as Price was floating in that photograph sort of in London, but not in London. It's just sort of uh, uh, a kind of uh, laboratory space, uh, as hyper-connected, and yet at the same time, strangely disconnected. And you can even see that the uh, choice of the site, uh, exactly the site where the Olympics will eventually be held, uh, uh, it has this in mind, this kind of a floating uh, uh, quality, drawn like this, but then explained by dotted lines, right? Of course, dotted lines being lines which show what is above, behind, beyond, uh, in the past, uh, in the future, moving, incomplete, temporary, cut, folded, desired, uncertain, or missing. In other words, there's a very long history of the dotted line. Uh, the CCA is, in, is, is, as an archive, filled with dotted lines, going all the way back deep into history. But, is it, but it is... Uh, dotted line never, as it were, allowed to become the main player, allowed to become the protagonist. With Cedric Price, the dotted line uh, is not the line that says what architecture has been or could be or will be or might be or what, and so on. Uh, it is what it is. It is, it is a, 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 a dotted line. Again and again and again. So again, a, a conceptual drawing of Fun Palace in which you get a kind of uh, simulation of walls and roof made actually by mobile uh, elements. Theater, even a car is understood as a complex of dotted lines, receiving dotted line information and so on and so on. And I hope you get the obvious point. This of course is re reinforced by the uh, cybernetic networks that are involved in kind of creating um, a precise relationship uh, between desire and uh, uh, e e effect but also just in the mechanics. In other words, all the horizontal elements that have to be added to Fun Palace are seen as a kind of nesting of different types of dotted line. You see perfectly in this uh, uh, image. Or again, if you look at, uh, we go back to an early drawing, number 22, where zones of movement are themselves are kind of free floating within a structural field, which is itself something like a dotted line, becomes more clear, dots, 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 uh, again, when we look in section, it's all about the dotted line. It's all about activity suspended within a kind of sensuous fabric of indeterminacy. And then we go to the very, very precise drawing that will become one of the key drawings of the, of the project. It's not just that the uh, escalators are, of course, uh, revolving and therefore drawn with dotted lines, but the entire structure represents itself as a kind of superset of dotted lines. And this is the drawing that Cedric said to me is his absolute favorite drawing of the entire uh, project. And this drawing is an ex astonishing condensation of all of his calculations about why this particular combination of scaffolding proportions leads, the maximum, leads to the maximum possible amount of activity. And what you see, of course, it's a series of dotted lines at three different scales, very, very precisely uh, uh, registered. It comes from a long uh, research into all of those calculations. We can do a history of where that drawing comes from. It is repeated in many, many versions. And ultimately, of course, underlying it all is the idea that that scaffolding is literally nothing other than a kind of monumental dotted line. So to summarize, you could say, okay, uh, Fun Palace is a horizontal floor with a dotted 
scaffolding uh, 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 above it, and a scaffolding that's operating in three dimensions. So you have these absolutely beautiful drawings of what happens when one dotted line meets another dotted line, uh, which is not necessarily simply uh, orthogonal in, in nature. It means that at the center of, of Fun Palace are these kind of uh, intersection points which float in the space like the dots in the dotted line, which present then the visitor with the decision points. And so throughout the structure of the Fun Palace is a kind of a three-dimensional dotted line in which one is always forced to, as it were, uh, uh, make uh, decisions. And the whole project itself being a kind of a dotted line box, uh, as it were, sort of bursting with possible uh, uh, futures. So again, if we return to the drawing that he didn't like, the drawing that's too much like a building, which is not enough like this drawing, it's too heavy, not not uh, kind of uh, dotted itself. And of course, for Price, uh, even this dotted line cannot become monumentalized as a dotted line. Um, so the, the, the activity that occurs within it should be so uh, so unexpectedly intense and so unpredictable that it literally kind of, as it were, wipes out the uh, memory of the scaffolding that allowed it to happen in a kind of a explosion of intense, unpredictable activity, which should, after 10 years, be a literal explosion because the building needs to be destroyed for fear that the dotted line system will go. In fact, uh, Price thought five years was the maximum length for the building, and John Littlewood insisted that he at least stretches it uh, uh, to 10 years. So I'm, I'm, and, and of course I'm just making this one very, very simple point, but notice that even in the name of the project, now we're back in 63, it's even fun dot, 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 question mark project. So even the name of the project uh, uh, is kind of captured in the idea of a, of a dotted line. We could even, even see that the dotted line is sitting on top of a horizontal. Um, so to, to summarize the basic thought here is... Um, and I'm afraid not to be adding too much to, to what has been said or, or, already. But if we, if we are doing research in the archives to celebrate the kind of relentless uh, stupidity reduction capacity of price, the, we, we, we are always faced with a kind of a d dilemma as to, uh, to, how to how to not allow any one of his projects to, as it were, become a monument uh, and therefore in a certain way un undo itself. And I guess I do suffer from the prejudice that I think that the Fun Palace, as it were, has within it principles that were at work in all of the other projects. It's a kind of, a, it's, a, it's not just one project amongst many, but it's also the, somehow the laboratory within which uh, Price invented himself uh, uh, as a kind of, as a, as a kind of an anti-architect. So I have the double dilemma of how to celebrate Fun Palace uh, as a kind of anti-architectural uh, mechanism not by chance to be to reduce stupidity is also to reduce architecture. Uh, architecture is is for price uh, uh, a word for stupidity. Uh, uh, very very clear. Uh, you could even say he gravitated towards architecture uh, like uh, moth to the flame, knowing that there was the the, the levels of pretension, uh, arrogance, uh, um, and and kind of clumsy thinking. Are, are, are dominate in architecture, and this gave him, of course, a, a, the ideal nutrients uh, for his kind of uh, anti-stupidity work. But how to make a non-stupid exhibition about a, a stupidity reduction machine made by another stupidity reduction machine without, as it were, undermining his, his uh, uh, capacity uh, uh, to surprise? And, and what I enjoyed so much in the, in the uh, presentations before was... Uh, is, is a new new lines of scholarship which are finding new ways to understand uh, the the sort of um, radicality or and and let's say kind of um, relentlessness of Cedric Price's kind of uh, intellectual project. So I think I, I think uh, my diagnosis would be, with the exception of my talk, uh, things are looking good. Uh, uh, I, I I wish I could have been uh, with you, and I am especially. Um, um, you know, uh, respectful and, and warmly so of, of Samantha's project. Uh, Samantha's kind of, uh, you know, dedication to making sure that, that price remains uh, documented in a kind of clear and easy to share way, uh, I think is absolutely in the spirit of, of, uh, uh, of, his, uh, of his thinking. 
and and it's just so uh, terribly important. So this enormous volume that that uh, Samantha has produced, I, I think of it as just the smallest, smallest thing, um, and it's just in the nature of prize that a book so big uh, is so monumentally small. Thank you.